Hi, welcome to an in-depth review of Star Wars Battlefront 2 multiplayer beta. Uh, normally I wouldn't even be picking up this game after the last uh, piece of trash that EA put out, which was Star Wars Battlefront 1. This is, uh, this is actually a better, a better installment of the franchise and an testament, for me at least, to the original Battlefront Battlefront 1, Battlefront 2 uh, franchise. So as you can clearly see, this one is still a first-person shooter. Uh, you're still blowing enemies up, and there are objectives for your character to still chase after in the multiplayer campaign modes, which does pit off uh, 40 to 40, uh, if I remember those numbers correctly. And uh, yeah, massive multiplayer campaign battle mode still clearly a thing, but now, as you might be able to discern, there are different classes. Uh, and these classes have different cooldown skills set alongside them and different weapons that they primarily will use. Uh, this, uh, you know, this is a, a little bit of an improvement and an in-depth um, step for EA to have made with this franchise. Uh, it definitely is a little more like their uh, first installment of the, of the series. However, the classes, of course, are very reminiscent to the original uh, games to have come out back in the early 2000s. Uh, however, the there are advanced classes that you can get by winning points in the battlefield. Now, some of these advanced classes, uh, they can be Jedis or hero characters, but they can also be ships. Now, as you're seeing, not all of these ships are impressive or useful to use. Uh, in the battleship for the clone army, you can only move around in your little tiny ball dome shooting things and it sucks it totally sucks you feel like you're hitting nothing there's not much for like you know smoke pluming up to give me a satisfying hit and even if there was it's so small and so hard to tell that you can't really see anyone uh, some other mechanics would have been really nice maybe some drop grenades or a drop spawn point for your team it just, you know, kind of seems like a big waste of time to be going in a circle. And it's supposed to be so you can attack the objective point. Uh, the objective point, however, can only be attacked during certain segments in which uh, an EMP blast or something has hit the objective point, causing it to be working again, or to be vulnerable again. Here's the sucky thing, though. You don't, if, if you die, it'll take you out, but also it'll just take you out if you've been there a long time. So it'll be like, you're done, no more fun for you, time to move on. Which puts you, of course, back on the ground, fighting the same ground fight. Sadly enough, though, you know, what if the thing is vulnerable and uh, I'm not on the ground? You know, what if the thing, or what if the thing's not vulnerable and I'm not on the ground? These are very frustrating situations to deal with so far in the beta. Uh, there are a lot of, like I said before, there are other standard classes, uh, specialist, operative, lieutenant, uh, and they come with their only little different things. You know, there's basically the sniper class. So you get uh, you get some uh, mines so you can lay out to secure a position, and then of course a binocular to look far ahead of you. Uh, now, in order to upgrade your classes, there are different crates for each class, and you'll unlock these crates as you level up. Uh, the max level for the beta is 10 for those curious. Now you'll get three holocards, cards, very overwatch, very look what you unlock at the end of every level, and then those cards will pertain to your um, your playing of the character. Now this does create, a, is, is, in my opinion, is going to create a difference between those who have leveled up and those who haven't. Uh, because you're going to have, you know, some major differences in the in the gear that they have. What you're looking at right now is a heavy character. Now, thankfully, the main abilities are pretty standard across the board and are, are, seem to be fairly useful. Uh, for the heavy, you got your own little shield, which, uh, great for the deflecting damage, kind of makes you the Reinhardt of the Battlefront 2 universe. Now, uh, you do get standard grenades. There's a few differences between the classes. Uh, these, each of these things have their own cooldown, uh, and then on top of that though, you also have what's kind of like the main ability of your character, kind of like, not really an ultimate, but close to. This has the longest cooldown between things. Uh, for the heavy, it's a Gatlin gun that's really good for suppressing fire, putting someone down on the ground. Uh, and all of these do uh, actually m fare decently well with the objective at hand, so you can definitely tell that a lot more playtesting went into this uh, uh, franchise, or in this installment of the franchise, than the predecessor. Uh, and of course, the weapon differences between classes, uh, while very do seem a little small, it's a, from what I could tell, it was only one, two guns between each class. Um, so, like an assault rifle for the assault character, and then uh, a few other differences. I, I, the sniper has like a tag kind of looking thing or something. 
there's a lot of, and, and the guns do have their own different abilities which is nice but uh, there there definitely could have been a little more variety then again this is the beta and complaining about variety is not something I should be doing but this is also an EA game so complaining about variety is completely warranted at times so there are other ways to use vehicles across the map there are land-based vehicles but there are space-based vehicles or starfighters as well and some of them uh, will actually let you move around the map which is fairly enjoyable for what it is. The map's well loaded. Uh, it renders pretty well. It's the, the timing. I mean, I didn't experience too much lag, which is really nice. The controls were fairly smooth, like a 3D. A pretty solid uh, flight simulator using using your PS4 controller. Uh, it handles like two joysticks, so I, in my opinion, it's actually one of the better uh, aspects of this game, which I'm going to get into a, a little bit later at this video. So the only downside, of course, being, again, let's say you're doing really well and you don't die. Well, unlike the original games, you eventually are just uh, ripped from the air and can no longer, uh, you know, traverse the map and do what you wanted. Now, this will this will manda this will be mandatory uh, once your team has infiltrated the the space it needs to infiltrate. So, therefore, people will be forced to get out of their vehicles and go straight to the ground. Uh, and you know this is frustrating because you want to you want to enjoy doing what you're doing. There's another new mechanic to uh, ground play that's kind of nice, which is rolling. Uh, that duck and roll can be really good for evasive maneuvers, putting you in the space you need to be in. And eventually, if you do well enough, you know you do get those battle points, not just for spaceships, but for champion characters. Uh, and you know the lower cost will get you the lower tier and so forth and so on. Uh, for the droids, they do have this little battle droid. Comes with a little rocket launcher, does more damage. Uh, increases rate of fire with damage and he has a heal thing as well. Some of these characters have support abilities that will, uh, like the lieutenant, will, will support your team giving them extra health or padding or whatever it may be to boost morale. Which is nice, you know, it's a nice little addition to the game. Gives lieutenants a little more of a, uh, a reason for being there. Um, I mean, that being said though, you know, you're still going to get to a lot of points where you're either choked up at someone's spawn uh, and are going to just try your best to figure things out. Now, there is another mode of the game that's a single player, not online mode, which you can, it's like challenges, very Smash Brothers and it's different challenges. Uh, you can play as just the champions and you have to collect X amount of deaths. Uh, there are usually multiple champions to pick through depending on the challenge and they come with their own abilities and it's pretty fun. It's an exciting way to do it. There are other modes along with that arcade mode. You do have a, a standard campaign like, well not campaign, sorry, starting to standard arcade mode which is very reminiscent to the original uh, series due to the fact that you're doing a 40-40 AI kind of set. It feels very reminiscent of, of its, uh, of its uh, predecessors or it's the, fran the game series it's based on uh, and it's pretty fun. You know, I, I got a kick out of doing it. I mean, yeah, they're standing around, so it's easier to shoot them, but it gives you some good practice for the online mode. Maybe not as chaotic, but it, it kind of gives you a, a bit of your bearings, which which feels better than a shitty tutorial face in front of you. Uh, however, my favorite part so far about this entire uh, game, the thing that I actually think is worth downloading the beta for, the thing I think is actually maybe even worth getting the game for, yeah, is the starfighter aspect. They've expanded it so you have a lot more objectives to deal with uh, and each um, fighter that you're using really has its own unique way of approaching the objective which again is very reminiscent to the original game so I don't know if I'm giving EA a lot of credit or I'm giving them a lot of copycat credit for you know uh, looking back behind them and saying well this was a good option let's let's try using this because this is what the fans clearly wanted in which case you know props to them because at the end of the day I want a new battlefront this was in some way I feel like if you you know rewind back to when EA released the trailer for battlefront 1 if this was the game they had released instead instead of some unfinished piece of trash then I would have been a lot happier with what I got. This is something I genuinely, you know, am interested in playing again. Due to the fact that the Starfighter aspect was controlled really well, you had a lot of things to do, and you felt like you filled in a job that wasn't just getting bombarded with, you know, random lasers and blasts and etc. Now, each class does have a lot of differences to them, uh, at least in, you know, their damage output and their survivability. Uh, two of the classes, I believe, have like a repair, like R2-D2 kind of thing. Uh, now, for those who are interested, slamming into uh, things does not do damage on them, uh, which is kind of sad because I had a lot of fun uh, in the old games doing damage to objectives by suiciding into them. 
uh, but of course that doesn't do any damage. So you will have to tactically find ways to get to your point and do the damage you need to do. And sometimes that will require your knowledge of each uh, ship, like the Y-Wing for example, for those people who know the Y-Wing is a type of bomber ship or does heavy damage. So its cooldowns and its abilities rely on being able to stay in a location long enough and, and, and fire some missiles or, or upgrade your uh, your tank thing and do what you need to do uh, and, and you know work on the objective, which you know works out for each Starfighter class. The old mode was pretty much just a bunch of people in one area. Uh, it's really nice that there's something to do, and it, it feels kind of like the true definition of Star Wars, you know, having this big fight in outer space and however uh, however it's going to play out. So you, you have Y-Wing, which is, you know, your own bomber class. There's interceptors. There, there's all sorts of uh, fun classes to check. Or there's Well, there's only four, sadly. I, I hope. There's also champion variants, though, of the... Uh, of the original of the original favorites that we all know and love uh so there's poe dammer's x-wing there's the slave 2 ship that uh, boba uses there's uh the millennium falcon of course darth maul's ship is also um in here which i think is pretty crazy uh but each ship clearly uh, can can dominate the battlefield but they're also really easy to spot so they can be really easy to focus damage on uh honestly you know like i said i, I can spend a lot of time going over how fun this, this game mode is, and it's by far the simplest game mode uh, that the game has to offer, yet at the same time, it's the most exhilarating. It feels like the most fun, the most thought out. To a certain degree, the maps are really well thought out. You're, you're constantly dodging and weaving between things, hoping to catch your eye onto something interesting, and you follow it wherever it's going to go, uh, and you know, you, you definitely feel like a part of a team. I feel like this was a bit of the Battlefield uh, team translating really well to Battlefront, that, that they, you know, didn't have too much of a difficult time. Uh, but before the end things off, I mean, of course, yeah, the game looks like Star Wars. What more do you want? Uh, and it's, yeah, sure, it's pretty. But I definitely think that they did a lot of improvements in this franchise, and I hope that they offer something to be a little forgiving about the fact that a bunch of people paid for a season pass from the first game that is now free uh, and really didn't get jack shit from it. So hopefully they, you know, the improvements aren't just in the gameplay but the presentation and uh, the product's overall um, uh, just uh, public presentation, it's public sales, how, how they're going to do it, if they're going to bundle this up. It looks like they're already doing quite a few bundles, which is really upsetting to me, because uh, it's just it's just stuff that should already be in the game, and there's no acceptable reason for it not to be. Uh, you know, working hard to unlock something is just as uh, important as the money I'm paying the game with, in my opinion, because that'll dictate uh, just you know my my overall faithfulness to the franchise. So that's my uh, review of Battlefront. Beta 2. If you liked the original games, then definitely check this one out. If you were looking for a fun FPS, I think this might be not a terrible choice for the holiday season. So I'll also be probably doing, because you know it's Star Wars coming around, there's probably the trailer dropping soon. It's for episode 8. So we'll have some more Star Wars discussions coming up, guys. Y'all have a great one. Don't forget to subscribe.